guys ready? All right. Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are gonna be shooting a brand new episode of Ask Thieves. One of our initiatives, one of our, our biggest initiative actually from last year, besides trying to win, was to what? That was, that was, that was, yeah. that was, no, no. That was, that I, was. I agreed with you, but I can't like hate it. So I was like, yeah. That was. Yeah, that's just my reaction. Like, yep. Oh man, we definitely have to keep that in there now. Yeah. <laughs> Break tension a little bit with a butter knife. That was fantastic. Great job. Great. That's yeah. we, that was the best intro we could have had for this video. Um, in an effort to uh, answer any questions that you guys might have for Neil and myself about the roster, about the year about the organization. Him and I are, 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 are sitting on this couch today to try to alleviate any questions and concerns that you guys might have. So, without further ado, let's do it. You wanna just jump into it? Yeah, let's jump in. All right, All right Neil. So, on the 100 Thieves subreddit, you know the deal, did this last time. Hopefully yes, we sir. won't spend as much time as we did because we were here for like two hours in the first episode. It's uh, a pleasure. It was, it was a pleasure. So we had 118 upvotes, which is really, really good. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I've been really happy with the traffic on our subreddit and 164 comments. So I'm just gonna go from top down right. and uh, pick some out and you and I can tag team these questions. Will do. Actually, it could be helpful. Well, I think in the questions, we'll probably answer a lot of the things that you would probably say about the spring split. Mm -hmm. So let's, we'll just start with the questions. So, Neil Prali Hamad. Am I allowed to look? Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, no, you can look, I'm just joking around. Will the support structure for the players be reassessed along with the player roster? So that's a really like a two-pronged yeah. question, I would say. So let's start with the support structure. Mm. You know, this year we brought on Ryu as our assistant coach. We have Joseph as our head analysis. And we have Sabrina as our team manager. And then mm. you obviously as the head coach. What do you think about the, the format and the structure that we had this year? And what else do you think we can do to support our players? Yeah, so I think one change we made from last year to this year was we added one more um, kind of strategic coach into the lineup, and we took away our performance coach, which was our like mental coach side of things. Um, so I think the vision going into this year was we had a lot of veterans who had a lot of experience, and sports psychology is kind of you get as much as the players need out of it, and our assessment early on was like these players are mature in the game, that they're not gonna like be able to like like reverberate very well with a sports psychologist and they'll be much more interested in just like you know the X's and O's of the game. Uh, so that was kind of our assessment early on going into this split. And for what it's worth, I I, I did agree with that. You know, yeah. we have a, a, a we have a we have a ton of veteran talent and they've spent, I mean, combined so many years playing professional League of Legends that we thought their guidance and their leadership and that experience alone was probably enough to uh, you know, push this team as forward as possible. Mm. And some players you'd be surprised don't reciprocate um, the mental conditioning that you try to help with, um, I would say. You know, I mean, even think back on it, if somebody offered to bring on a sports psychologist for me when I was competing, and maybe you can comment mm. on that too, I probably wouldn't have been that receptive of it. Um, but actually, I probably shouldn't say all that. No, I think that's fair because I think that's kind of a bit of the question why like everyone always asks like why doesn't every team have one and it's you know kind of just like if you went to yeah like a therapist or any kind of like mental specialist if you're trying to self-improve yourself like if you don't really want it or believe in it it's not really going to work so it really is like you're only going to get as much as like you want to give so I think yeah with our players we were Obviously expecting a much better split. Yeah, And uh, I absolutely. think specifically my coaching style works well. If, if we're doing well, I can mentally deal with players, like deal with their egos, deal with like them getting too excited. Um, one thing that I'm not great at is like bringing a player up. So when we're on this big losing streak, which we didn't really expect to have such a like you know, drastic change in our game plan, um, that's actually where the sports psychologist would have been a really big asset this split. And that's something that we're looking to go for for summer split. Yeah, and you know what, the the fact that you admit, uh, you said it actually very early on. I, I, you actually think, about, you might have said this last year, but I remember you saying it specifically in the spring split is that I respect the fact that you can admit the things that you're good at and the things that you're not so great at. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really respect that uh, from you and I, I really, I think it's admirable and I really appreciate it just as like man to man because not a lot of people are very good at admitting things that they're they're, they're not particularly I'm very good at and 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 when you talk about 
bringing a player up and you know like motivating them and trying to get them out of their own head or trying to motivate them to do more to do better um, that I definitely think that is a skill set and every player is so individually different that it really is sometimes hard to recognize especially with our League of Legends team what they really 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 need or what they need yeah. to hear um, so you know for what it's worth maybe we didn't recognize it early enough that we needed to bring on more help from a from a from a mentality standpoint, um, but we actually are working with a sports psychologist right now mm -hmm. um, who is very interested in working with us throughout the entirety of the summer split. But we brought them in, um, or we, we brought them in for the last week and a half of the split yeah. just to really try to get us to a place where we can understand the ins and outs of our players and what isn't working, what could possibly work in the future, what combinations of players we think fit well together from a, from a chemistry standpoint. And so we're doing, as much as we possibly can um, over the next month and a half or however long it, it takes until the summer split um, to try to figure out what's best in terms of support structure for the players. Um, as a follow-up to this question, do you think we will see the return of a performance coach? Mm. Got me while I was drinking. Yes, I think for summer split we'll see the return of a performance coach. I think that was something that we missed a lot this year, um, especially when things are not going as planned. That's where they're going to be able to do the most work. So I think if everything goes perfectly, they will have a role. If everything goes like poorly again, I think they can help us get on track again. Okay. So very, um, yes. so that valuable, that's valuable to hear from me, um, that you're on board with the performance coach. Obviously mm -hmm. I knew that, um, of course, cause we talk <laughs> off camera. Yes. Um, the, the, all these things are not a surprise to me. I think our management team works really hard to, mm -hmm give the players as much help as they need, and, and, and hopefully the coaches feel that way too. Um, but we have Sabrina, who is the newest team manager um, this year. I think she's done a great job. We're working on a performance coach. Are there any other things from a support standpoint that you can think of? If you can't, it's fine, but I figured to wrap this one up, I just wanna make sure you got nothing else on your mind. No, I think that's gonna be kind of our focus is mostly just getting the mental coaching aspect into our team. Okay. Um, Great. And so the second part of this two-pronged question was the player roster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, it's something that I talked about briefly in the heist, but maybe you can give me your take on the roster as it currently stands. And you don't necessarily have to go into detail, but maybe from a, just a construction standpoint of, of the team, as you see it from spring split going into summer split, do you think there will be changes? And if so, what would they be? Yeah. So I'll definitely say there's going to be changes. Um, we gave this roster a lot of time and a lot of work and I think at, at this point if we weren't able to like naturally create some kind of chemistry I don't think it will like blossom going into summer split I think usually a team needs maybe a month month and a half together so I think at this point we're kind of like overdue for what we should have received from what we expected um, so I think yeah we don't have any like solid decisions yet obviously this is very early but I think a biggest thing is like we have a lot of strong parts, but the sum is less than the parts right now. So our goal is to make this where the sum is greater than the parts. And that's kind of where our iterations are starting right now. So I definitely don't think there's going to be a situation where we have like the exact same roster because yeah, we just, we had enough time to make it work and we weren't able to do that. That was very articulate. Thank you. You're a well-spoken young man. I like that. English is my first language. <laughs> Um, great. So, yeah, you know, I guess for me, I'm not going to talk about it too in depth just because Neil is uh, probably the man to talk to when it comes to roster changes. But it's not a bad thing that this team is going to change. You know, I, I think I think Neil's right. We've given this team enough time to try to work its its way into a winning team. And that obviously has not happened. Um, and this is the nature of, of, of team-based sports. You know, you, you put together a recipe that you think will be successful. And at the end of the day, if it isn't, uh, you, you have to try to fix what the problems are. And, and if you do everything you can to fix those problems and it's still not working, then you, you got to switch up the recipe. Mm. Um, and so we've, we respect all the players that have, have, have competed for our organization for the spring split. And uh, we're going to do as much as we can to support them um, in their futures. We don't know what those changes will be, um, but I, I, I do want to guarantee to everybody watching that there will be roster changes going into the summer split. Cool. 
Um, the second question came from N Perez 21 and he wanted to know if there are any thoughts on bringing a sports psychologist back for the team, mm. which we discussed in the first question. Um, a lot of the questions that we've had in this, um, in this Reddit thread have been very uh, concerned about the mental aspects mm -hmm. of, our, of our team and our program. So I think we touched on that pretty well for the first. Yep. Um, third question from Don January 1. Aframu caught so much heat this split along with other team members. How has the organization been handling team mental health and overall morale within the team? Yeah. I... Oh. No, feel free. Oh, yeah. So, well, the first thing is that Aframu has been getting a lot of heat. I think he signed up for it for sure. I think him coming into this team last year, knowing he wanted to be this kind of team leader role, uh, I think he kind of graciously, graciously accepts you know, all the criticism that comes towards him, especially when it comes to anything like shot calling like that. I know he he's really hard on himself about that stuff. So um, I'm sure that's shaking him a bit because it's not fun to be losing and then hearing a lot of criticism. But he's a very mature player and he's a veteran of the game. So he's gone. He's had poor performances with his teams in the past. So he's like kind of able to work through this and do well. So we kind of have a lot of faith in him to bounce back from that. Um, what was the second thing? Um, the second aspect of this question was the mental the health overall and overall, mental health? the overall morale of the team. Yeah, so overall morale was actually a lot better than I think a, pe a lot of people would expect from a last place team. Um, big part of that is the way we were building this team was mostly around like we needed to get some kind of team camaraderie very early on in the split. Absolutely. I think we missed that a lot from last year. So kind of getting these guys a lot more connected was a big focus this year and I think we achieved that. Obviously we didn't get that to translate that on stage at all, but Dealing with losses was actually a lot healthier this year. So the fact that we're losing a lot made it a little bit better. But I think, yeah, team morale has been a lot better than I think we would have expected. And I'm actually really proud of that. You know, when I see Bang posting photos of Andy falling asleep on the couch from <laughs> earlier today or them hanging out even outside of the game, you yeah, guys... They go to the gym together. They go to the gym together. We did the team dinners for a long time um, every week. And for me... Just seeing our players happy to be where they're at, I think is, is one thing that I love so much compared to last year, just because you're right, there wasn't a ton of time spent together outside the game. It seemed like everyone would just go to their rooms mm -hmm. and uh, it just didn't feel like it was a fun place to be. Um, and now I find myself sitting at the office or laying in bed at night and on and, and social media and just to see our players posting and, and talking to each other and interacting with our other players from our other teams underneath the 100 Thieves organization. I feel like the culture here is so much healthier than it was last year. Yeah. And regardless of how we performed, as long as our players were happy in, in some way or another while competing for 100 Thieves, I think that's a win in my book. Um, but of course we want to win. Um, yeah. So I think the morale of the team was surprisingly really good for being a team that was in last place. Yeah. Which, you know, at the end of the day, if you're going to be in last place, you got to look at some positives. And I think that's a really good thing to look at. And I appreciate that, Neil. Um, our next question comes from Stoffel Y. Mershish. I don't know how to pronounce that. There's a lot of letters, yeah, a lot of syllables. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what he envisioned mm -hmm. when he typed that out and signed up for Reddit. What are some concrete plans you guys have in regards to the summer split? Are roster changes a thought that you are entertaining at the moment, or is that not happening? Obviously, we answered yeah. the second part already. Um, is there anything on the front end with what are some concrete plans you guys have in regards to the summer split? Besides the sports psychologist that we mentioned, roster changes, is there anything that you wish we would have done in the spring split before it was too late? Hmm. From a structural point of view, I think we don't have anything too concrete outside of the sports psychologist. I think, is it worth it to go a little bit more deep dive into the day-to-day? -day? Yeah, if you concrete want, changes? man. Listen, dude, this is yeah. our opportunity to give as much insight as we can to what happens every day. So I think that's yeah. great. Okay, so uh, a pretty concrete change from spring to summer is in the spring split, I wanted to kind of give a lot more open-ended to the players, at least when it came to pre-game and post-game, which is for a coach kind of like that is our arena, right? We don't get to play the game, but before the game we get to prep the players, after the game we get to review it. So those are the two biggest areas a coach gets to kind of um, influence the players. And uh, this split, since I had so many veterans, so many like, you know, a lot of prestigious names, I wanted to kind of give them a little bit more freedom with that. Um, 
So the consequence of that is like we actually learned at a lot slower pace because obviously no one's going to be mean to each other. Everyone's going to be very like polite. So our direction and improvement was a bit slower. It kind of opened up the lines of communication so people were more comfortable giving feedback, but it didn't push us as fast as we needed to go. Um, so a big change uh, for this spring was that was I changed a lot of my review and how we did pre and post game mostly to kind of cater to how this team was. Um, going into summer though, since I know these players a bit more and I know how they'll, they like were with that system, uh, I think I'm going to go back to how I normally do and have a lot more um, kind of like concise and directive pre and post game direction for the players. And that's something that is going to 100% change for the summer. And I think in spring, maybe it was like experimental almost, where it's like I thought this would work with them and it, and it didn't. Okay. So going into summer, that's like something at least from my perspective, I'm going to be changing that's you know, maybe too specific, but at least it's, you know, talked about. All right, Neil, I appreciate the transparency. Um, I think pre and post game makes a lot of sense. That's where you can have the most control. Um, and I think that answers Stoppelweimer's question uh, pretty directly. But now it's our turn from an organizational uh, standpoint. Um, what can we do as, as a management team? So obviously this split has not gone as well as we have hoped. Um, and you know, we've been brainstorming at the office, like how do we help the players improve? Like what can we do as a team to make sure they're ready every single week to elicit the best performance on stage? And so we've actually worked really closely with Rocket Mortgage here at the Rocket Mortgage team house to uh, figure out ways to do exactly that, help them improve, help them practice better. And so over the next month, month and a half leading into the summer split, we are actually so over the next month, month and a half, uh, here at the Rocket Mortgage Team House, we are completely renovating the practice room where you guys spend all of your time, day in and day out, scrimming other teams, going over draft, going over review, to give them the most immersive practice experience that they can have. I think what's really interesting, you know, when we talk about bringing in a sports psychologist, and, and especially for esports, how important the mental aspects of this game is, having them as, as, as close to that onstage experience as possible, those are like the small tangible ways that we as an organization can help them improve. If we can execute what we have planned, I think it's gonna be phenomenal and I think it's gonna help the players instrumentally in, in their practice and hopefully help you get more out of them um, as you practice. So I'm really excited. We're gonna be unveiling it very soon and I think it's gonna be incredible. Yeah, so a big part of this remodeling was this split we had a big problem translating our scrim play to stage play, which is kind of just like an unknown phenomenon really. And a big part of this remodeling, because I've seen the plans and the schematics and they look really, really nice, is to kind of reinvigorate the players into making the practice just like stage will be. So hopefully this translation will be much easier and it'll be like a lot more natural when we're practicing, that it feels like the intensity of stage play. Shouts to Rock and Morge, man. Yeah. No, seriously, I'm, I, this has been probably the most interactive that I've been with a, like a title sponsor from, from my time in Optic Gaming and 100 Thieves, and they've been so incredibly helpful. Like, when things aren't going well, when you have a partner that can ask you, how can we help, like, what can we do to make a difference, it shows that they really care, and I appreciate that so much. And I think you'll see how much they actually do care when we unveil everything because it's ridiculous it's it's insane all right just to recap we've talked about making sure the players are mentally ready to step on stage for the summer split we've talked about roster changes even though we couldn't go too far in depth because we're not sure what those changes will be yet mm -hmm. we've talked about concrete ways in, in changing your coaching style and, and where you can have the most impact we've talked about the organization changing the structure of practice and, and how we can help them be stage ready and so I feel like we've covered quite a bit. So let's maybe hit one or two more questions, see if there's any stones that have been left unturned. Mm -hmm. um, all right, everyone wants to blame, this comes from Mendoc. Everybody wants to blame someone or something when this happens. When asked what happened or what changed to resolve the issues, the answers are always the same. A bland PC answer that we hear from teams that are eliminated from playoffs. My question isn't who is being cut or what the next move is, but rather what did you learn from this split? In more detail, what did you notice that was failing in the team and what steps did you take to attempt to resolve the issues that failed? Um, so I think that's a pretty loaded question. So let's just mm -hmm. dissect it. Um, what did you learn from this split? What did you learn? What, give me like the, the highest level of what you understood from the split that you learned. Mm, 
So I think the most I learned is just how like the players like learn and improve. I think that was kind of understanding their pace and what kind of teaching style they work the best with is really important. Um, I think the second probably biggest thing we learned is just like how the players like weaknesses and strengths line up with each other. So it's really obvious like once we start losing, we don't, we were kind of in the same boat where we're not really interested in like who to blame or anything like that, especially like as a coaching staff, kind of like looking how the team plays, but more of like what roles are we missing or like what's not being fulfilled or like what can just be straight up better. So I think we've learned a lot more like which roles need to be fixed or filled a lot more appropriately than what this team had to offer. Um, and then I think, yeah, learning styles was a big thing. And then obviously uh, we really heavily underestimated the impact a performance coach would have with this roster. So I think those were probably a few of the most like top listed learning things. Okay, so that answered the first part. Um, the second part is um, what did you notice was failing in the team, you know, midway mm -hmm. through the split or at the end of the split? Yeah, so I think a lot of our failures came from like our, I don't know, what, what's the way to put it, like memory recognition, pattern recognition maybe, where we're in similar situations that we were in scrims to stage, but our reactions were very different. So to me, what I learned from that is like, we actually just have a different emotional response because the pictures are the exact same, but the responses are different. Usually the reason that happens is like something is like off in our brains, like we're focused on something else, we're not focused on the same stuff, and that usually causes our different response. So. That kind of thing was a kind of a big apparent problem, I think, with the team, because even watching our matches, there's a lot of scenarios that were, I think, people were very confused, like, why we didn't respond properly, like, right, they're going here, we should go here. Um, and we weren't able to make these kind of, like, obvious plays. Are you talking about the Baron and the Elder Dragon? I might be, maybe I'm not, but that would be a Why do we get off Baron, man? I don't know. <sighs> but that's, that's one of the ones where, yeah, uh, there is not a really easy, like, look at this, the blame thing, it's because almost everyone on the team should be able to respond appropriately appropriately to this play. Okay. Um, so yeah, a lot of our faults are not like laid on one person, which is going to make um, kind of really interesting how our roster is going to be looking for next split. Um, but what was the second part again? The last part is what steps did you take yeah. to attempt to resolve the issues? Yeah, during the split? Yeah, so by the time we kind of got wind of like what our mistakes were, it was kind of like how do we collectively like get it back to zero right because we're really in the red during the split so we needed to get how we're actually like playing our scrims to stage play and then how we're actually getting like our roles more defined in game and i think us trying to rectify that just came too late into the split this this kind of stuff we needed to learn much faster and it took us too long to figure out these problems and the solutions so i think yeah we weren't able to really implement the fixes fast enough okay that's fair Shout out to Mendoc. He said, 100T, you hit rock bottom and it sucks, but now there's nowhere but up, which is very true. I want to see that fire in the games that made me smile even when you lose. I want to see the team fight. Don't be scared to lose. Be determined to win no matter what. Yo, Mendoc. Yeah. I Fuck with you, my guy. We'll give you some good games next split. Um, okay. I think actually this is a pretty cool question. Jermaine Cole, LOL. Have two coaches being on stage ever been considered by the team at all? Mm -hmm. Most teams are doing it. I'm surprised to see it's only been probably on stage and not Kelsey as well, or maybe even Nate shot. They didn't ask uh, that. You're not that coming end. on stage, buddy. I really, really like you a lot. You do a great job. You're really smart. <laughs> I'd be literally... No, your league knowledge is maybe not the re ready oh, for stage. Oh, no. Yet. I'm just like, you know, like, guys, fucking get excited. We're playing yeah. video games for a lot of money. That's all Actually, I say. you could be a good pump-up coach. Uh, yeah. I'll give him the X's and O's. You give him the heart. Uh, all right. So let me ask you this. Will we ever see two coaches on stage? And if, yeah. if not, why? If so, why? Okay, so <laughs> possibly. You guys get a tease and that's kind of it. Um, so I'll give it's my- such a tease. Yeah, so my perspective early on was, it does get really distracting having two people on stage because I guess the fear of, like we can't argue really in draft because the time allotment, you get you know, 30 seconds for these picks. Um, there's not enough time to actually have a like debate over which pick and I think if you start that kind of debate even in a short time frame it leads really unsettling for the players they're going into the match being like should we pick this or this like my coaches were arguing so that's one fear I've kind of like set aside a bit um, but going on stage with Kelsey like gave a little bit of more information on how it'll be like and it gave me a new kind of perspective on it uh, I will say one of the things that I'm hesitant about bringing two coaches on stage is 
even this last week with Kelsey, there's times where the countdown is going, right? And we have, once all the champions are locked in, you have nice 60 seconds. And in these 60 seconds, most of the coaches do is they talk about like how the game's gonna go. They'll maybe remind what you guys worked on that week. Any kind of like verbal trigger, you kind of want to like seed into the player's brain. That's kind of what you want to use that time for. And when Kelsey's on stage, she's actually saying a lot of really good stuff. And while she's talking, I had developed the, my own things of what I wanted to say to the players. And by the time I wanted to speak, I'm just listening to what Kelsey's saying. I'm like, she's saying some really good stuff to the players. And I actually didn't even chime in towards the end because I was like, she's, I she's I, saying all this good stuff. I really, I really I thought you were about to say, she's saying all this good stuff. And then I didn't have anything smart to say. Oh, no, no, no. I, had, <laughs> I, I still had stuff I wanted to say, but I'm like, I can't cut her off. Like, How she's much got do you guys flow. have to talk about, dude? You guys go over draft for like hours before the night. Yeah. But no, it's what's going to happen that game. League of Legends is crazy, man. <laughs> so we might see two coaches. Yeah, we might, we might see two coaches. But There's it's good, good to know that bad. you're not like shutting it off in your head or you're not opposed to it. You're not yeah. like a dictator. Um, that's super helpful too. Um, Thank you. We've answered a lot of questions. Yes, I think we, we touched on the most pressing matters that everybody had on top of mind. And so if there's anything else that you'd like to talk about, feel free. I mean, I'm going to have some words for the audience before we go, but if you want to add anything on, this would be your time. No, I think there's nothing too much to add on. I really appreciate like all the questions and all the thoughtfulness, and I'm really glad that people are still sticking with us and having hope for us in summer, because we're not, we haven't stopped working. Being in last place means we're working harder. Yeah, and that, and that actually brings up a great point in my mind, and, and one thing that I wanted to make sure that I got across to everybody watching this video is, uh, it's never fun losing. Nobody likes to lose, and especially for these young players and even our veteran players. When you spend as much time as they have in their careers, perfecting their craft, and even reaching the LCS level is an achievement on its own. Um, I see the time that goes into practice day in and day out. I see the, the emotion and the investment that they make every single week um, when they show up to the LCS studio to try to be as best as they can be. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes, like I said earlier, you just don't have the right recipe. You know, you can do everything in your power to prepare for these matches, but at the end of the day, some things just aren't meant to work. Um, and that's the, the nature of competition. Um, it just so happens that every single week, we had a tough challenge and we weren't able to come out on top. But I don't think we should take for granted the time that was invested and the careers that have been built to reach this point um, and all the effort that was put forth uh, by every single one of our players, whether it was Huhi, whether it was Soligo, Anda, Someday, Bang, you know, uh, Aframu, and our entire academy team stepping on stage in the last week. Um, this is not something that is easy to share with the audience with how m many, you know, day, or with how many minutes and hours and days and weeks and months that are spent practicing um, to try to be the best team for you guys week in and week out. It's just things that you don't see and we do as best a job as we can in the heist to show you guys the, the, the work and the effort that goes into this. but. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, it's unbelievable even from my perspective as somebody who used to do this uh, full time. I didn't even, I didn't practice at this level. I didn't commit at this level that LCS players do. So I have a, 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 an, an unexplainable um, level of admiration for, for our team and all the players that have came into our program this year and busted their ass um, every single day. So. With that in mind, the other thing that I want to mention too that's important for everyone to understand, and I want to say this to you directly, and, and I think you know how I feel, but Neil put out a, a tweet, and I mentioned this a little bit in the Heights as well, um, where you, 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 you took blame for our performance and you took blame for us being in last place, where I think one, that's very ignorant, and two, I'm very upset that you would even have that thought enter into your mind, just because when, when, when you step on stage, it is an entire team and organization standing behind you. You know, you have the players in front of you, but you have all of us that are behind you. And there are so many different reasons why this team was not a success. Some that we didn't foresee and some that we weren't able to fix. And that's just the way of the road. That's just the way it goes. And I think that for you to even spend even a second thinking that this is just your fault or to any of our players, and we have, done exit interviews with every single one of our players. We have asked for their feedback. We have talked to them. We have communicated with them 
Um, we have communicated with them throughout the entirety of this season. Um, I think communication has been the one thing that's so important, but if they do watch this video, they want to hear it from me, and I want you guys to hear it from me as well. The reason why we did not succeed is not one player's fault. It is not one coach's fault. It is not one person's fault. The, the work and the effort that I see from everybody at this organization, from the coaches to the players to the production team to the management team, everybody that is involved, this is just esports. This is just competition. And sometimes things don't pan out the way that you want them to. But as long as you tried your best and did everything you could to be the best team you could be, then I think that's something that is, is honorable and that's something that you can hang your hat on every single night knowing you did what you could um, and you did not quit and you, you weren't lazy and you weren't just turning over and giving up because I know for a fact that nobody at this organization did that. I know for a fact that none of the players did that. I know that you didn't do that. I know that our coaching staff didn't do that. I know our management team didn't do that. So it sucks. Last place is not great. It's not fun a place to be in. I'm sure it's not fun for you guys to watch at home, but we're doing everything that we can to improve. And the, the, a lot of these comments are right. There's only one way up. Or there's, there's only one place we can go from here, and that's up. So, you know, from the bottom of my heart, like, I just want to thank you for all the time that you invested, all the late night phone calls, all the, or, all the early and late night phone calls, all the conversation that we had after our matches at LCS all the, the, the off days that you were supposed to spend relaxing that you you know, uh, decided to work harder and, and try to figure this all out, it, it, it's just a shame, you know? Because sometimes effort doesn't equal results, and that's the hardest pill to swallow, I think. But I know how much time you put in this. I know how much time our players put in this. I know how much our team put in this. So we're going to try to do better. That's the only thing we can do. It's the only thing we control is our effort. Um, and I know for a fact that there was no uh, shortage of that in the spring split and there will be absolutely no shortage of that in the summer split. So we appreciate you guys supporting us throughout the year. We're gonna do everything we can to get better and we'll be back hopefully stronger and better than ever in the summer split. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching.